So let's get into some problems and some some solutions. And I think we're starting to share off the biggest problem of all time, which happens to be the possibility of war that was triggered this past Thursday-ish, give or take. So that being the case, what are we anticipating this year? Would you be full-fledged war? How would, the, how would the markets respond or what? Somebody kick it off. Uh, I don't think we are going to have a full a full-fledged war. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. Trump's not a all-out war guy. Mm -hmm. Trump is a a strategically placed drone guy. Mm -hmm. I myself, I question if this was not led to happen for the same reason that JFK was notified that uh, were people actually coming after him after he had done the actual Bay of Pigs. I've been covering the Iran thing for some time. I've written several articles about it, um, going all the way back to 2015. And uh, if anyone wants to read the most recent piece, I put it out on New Year's Eve, actually, when things started to boil over again. Um, it'll sticky feeling about nuclear Persia part two. And it's, you know, I trader stuff on Twitter. And then there's a running chronology of what happened since that night. But within the article, you can link out to the previous article. So with that said, you know, this goes back to Israel being given statehood. That's where it started. Even before JFK was, was a wet dream for anyone. Um, then we had the six day war in 1967. And uh, the Arab world was not very happy about being defeated in six days. Ever since that time, terrorism has been a problem, um, which then reached our shores on multiple occasions, which culminated in 9-11. Um, the current situation where it's going to lead, just a little recap. The, the guy that he took out, Salome, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. I, I apologize. But um, like Ben said, you know, you might as well take out the VP or some someone in the cabinet, you know, for instance, uh, the head of the Secret Service. I mean, take your pick. It, it was, it's a major hit. But the guy was at the wrong place at the right time um, because he actually had just gotten off a plane at the airport. And the Iranian-backed militia leaders were in SU, two SUVs waiting to pick him up. And while they were driving out of the airport, Someone in those SUVs was on a cell phone, which was in contact with those folks that were shooting Katusha rockets at the airport, but they were waiting for him to leave and get in the SUVs and get out of the way. And that's how we identified their spot. I am waiting for all of us as humanity to say, okay, we're done with physical warfare. We're just done with it. And one way, because... You know, we're not showing respect for the creation. We're not sh showing respect for people. And, yeah, we're going to disagree. If you disagree, then you leave me alone, I leave you alone. That doesn't mean I don't think that if you're attacked, you don't get to defend yourself. You actually, you absolutely do. But as countries, we need to find different solutions than the ones that we've been executing on, pun intended, that haven't worked for thousands of years. You want to wage war? Wage it. It's called economic warfare. America can go to war, economic war, with any country in the world. We have to trade, change our trade policies. We have to change tr uh, tariffing and taxation. And, and I've said this before about other countries. You want to sell something in the U.S., bring it. You just have to do one thing before you can. You have to get what I call a certificate of compliance, which means Everything involved with the manufacturer and the people of getting your product to market has to meet or exceed our standards. If you can do that, you can sell it. So if you can't, you can't sell it. Because all the things that's happening, I anticipate, like out of this fear, concern of market volatility and everything like that, there's going to be an increase in all the undervalued assets right now. And so I'd imagine the cryptocurrency section is going to do well, metals going to do well. Hell, equity's gonna to continue to do good just because if it doesn't, all hell gonna break loose. So it's gonna be opportunities all the way around. But yet, what's the best hedge? What's the best opportunity to get the most bang for your buck, knowing 
the Fed is about to monetize and the government is about to borrow. This century is going to be the most, I mean, this decade is about to be the most debt incurred by a government of all time because they're going to ride this thing to the wheels fall off. What should people be looking at to prosper and to take advantage of opportunity? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head uh, before, Mike, and that it's not all debt, but smart debt. Number two, you can have a little gold or you can have a cryptocurrency. Whatever you think is an insurance policy, there's some people that think that's gold, some people think it's crypto. Uh, you know, I'm not here to, to say it is or isn't, but whatever you think is an insurance policy, just have a little bit of it. Um, if you're in debt, there's good debt, there's bad debt. Uh, the best way to be in debt is to not be in more debt than the assets that you have <laughs> and be able to manage it properly. Uh, but don't go into debt just because you think, oh, everyone else is doing it because you're going to find yourself having some major problems like the United States is having right now. Yeah, well, to, to, to take it a step further, look at Argentina and their 100-year bond. They've gone bust in their history. They've gone bust eight times. Eight times they've defaulted on their debt in their call it 150 year history right. and you're going to give them money and if you look at a chart of those bonds of course they they they're they, the price is halved but you, then you look at austria who also has a 100 year bond and this i think is something that most people really aren't taking into consideration when they look at this negative interest rate uh, sovereign debt and now by the way corporate debt in europe there's there's negative yielding corporate debt in uh, in Europe in some places. But they look at this and they, they, they kind of scratch their heads and they say, well, why? 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 You know that you're going to lose money. And, and, and this is why I'm transitioning. This is, I love you guys. I love <laughs> all you guys. But please, listen to me. Come over to the crypto world. I am making money hand over fist. Don't beg us, Ben. Don't beg us. I can't, help it. I can't help it. You're so beautiful. Come over to the good side. <laughs> uh, there are opportunities over in cryptos, and this is just one I know of. If you invest $150,000 in this structure of a network of a platform, that your monthly revenue off the transactionary charges off the network is $4,000. And it's, there's people making money, just ridiculous amounts of money running a node on your computer. The node is like physical bank location that handles transactions on the network. It's, while all this gets worse, us on the new boat. <laughs> opportunity. So yeah, so like- There's opportunity out there.